the Windsor Police Service, at least the brass that is, is so hell-bent on checking all the diversity boxes, including the transgender one, they don't care what the rank and file officers have to say. Somebody shouldn't be forced to watch somebody else undress that doesn't have the parts they don't have. I mean, it seems like they're pushing to uh, basically give everybody freedoms where freedoms don't belong. Come on now, <laughs> it's got to stop somewhere. It's either a male or a female, that's it. David Menzies for Rebel News here in Windsor, Ontario. And folks, I'm back at Windsor uh, Police Headquarters. I'm doing a follow-up on the curious story that is Jane Roller. Now, Jane, despite that name, is a biological male. He is currently presenting himself as a female. And as we previously reported, there are many police officers here who are upset and offended by his behavior, namely that he changes in the female change room, allegedly. That's according to several officers I've spoken to. And the fact that he is always allegedly first in line to strip search a female suspect. Again, he is a biological male. Now, this is highly problematic. A lot of women don't want to get naked in front of a male. There are devout Christian and Muslim female officers on the force. This is highly problematic for them as well, as you can imagine. But their concerns aren't being heard. In fact, I have been told that the brass has said, stop complaining about Mr. Roller or else you're going to be charged with harassment. Can you imagine? That's how far they're going to accommodate Jane Roller. Now, I have reached out over the last few weeks several times to several people here, including Gary Francoeur. He is the communications director, and I've left a couple of detailed messages. He won't return my calls. I have also spoken with Bryce Chandler. He is the Employment and Labor Relations Director and Legal Counsel for the Windsor Police Service. I wanted to hear what he had to say because when he was first appointed in December 2018, he told the Windsor Star that he was in the months ahead looking forward to improving diversity amongst employees and I guess it doesn't get more diverse than a transgender officer, a male pretending he's female. I also reached out to Yvonne Ume. She is the equity, diversity and inclusion officer for the Windsor Police Service. She promised to get back to me. That was maybe three weeks ago. And so she's gone radio silent as well. Now we've paid two house calls right to headquarters and again, the party line is, uh, please reach out to Mr. Francoeur. I guess we'll do it a third time, but I'm not hopeful he's going to return my call. Now, there is an added element, and it's disturbing, folks, if it is indeed true. And it's this. According to one of my sources, Mr. Roller originally applied to be a police officer with the Chatham Police Service and he failed the psych test. So his dreams were dashed there, he came to Windsor, and I've been told that he either failed the psych test here or did not take it. In any regard, isn't this highly disturbing? There is someone who is allegedly not all there psychologically, at least according to the testing, and he now has lethal force, he now carries a gun. And believe me, folks, it's not me who's really concerned about this. It's the rank and file police officers. But even though we broke this story a couple of weeks ago, um, there has been no activity on the roller file. Actually, that's not true. The Windsor Police Service brass issued a statement, a memo to all the officers. And here's what it has to say. Quote, Dear members, recently a video was released aimed at one of our members. The content of the video was insulting and demeaning. This type of behavior towards one of our members is deeply disappointing, and it is our hope that members will not propagate hatred amongst our own, let alone others. 
We want to assure all of you that every single member's safety and wellness is important to our police service and to our community. We know that the Windsor Police Service is proud of its commitment to diversity and, most importantly, proud of the support we have for one another. Now, more than ever, it is imperative to amplify the voices of those combating the marginalization of transgender people. As police and public safety professionals, we have the privilege to promote, defend, and uphold all human rights. Trans rights are human rights, and we will continue to support all members and work together to eliminate discrimination and targeted hate. We are all here to protect those who may not be able to protect themselves. That is what we do, end quote. So there you have it. Uh, apparently, the safety and the well-being of uh, the rank and file police officers, especially those who are real biological females, they don't count. It just seems to me that the Windsor Police Service, at least the brass that is, is so hell-bent on checking all the diversity boxes, including the transgender one, that it doesn't, they don't care what the rank and file officers have to say. And I understand this is plunging morale right into the toilet, this uh, accommodation or even over accommodation of Mr. Roller. It is just bizarre, bordering on preposterous. In any event, we are going to do some streeters, ask people what they think about this situation. I have also told the police, given my contact information, if Mr. Roller wants to come on camera and do an interview, I'm all ears. And I think on the way back to Toronto, uh, we'll drop in at the Chatham Police Service headquarters. That's about 70 kilometers away from Windsor and see if they can offer any comment. I reached out to their media relations officer and get this folks, that same person also happens to be the head of diversity, equity and inclusion. It just never ends, does it? And by the way, I should also note, according to my sources, in light of our first report, which was deemed hateful and disrespectful. Uh, there is an investigation that's been launched, not into the conduct of Mr. Roller, a man pretending to be a female, but rather who the whistleblowers are. Again, the threat is they will be criminally charged if outed. And that begs the question, what are the charges? Is there actually charges against whistleblowing? Uh, are there actually charges today in calling out a wrong? Well, we'll see in the days and weeks ahead. What do you think about this? Well, I think it's wrong. Straight up, period, wrong. Yeah. If it is wrong, why is this being done? Why is this being tolerated? Uh, I guess it's the way society is nowadays. Yeah. I mean, it seems like they're pushing to uh, basically give everybody freedoms where freedoms don't belong. I think that that's going a little bit too far. I mean, if you claim to be a female, you're a female, that's okay. But, you know, touching females, I don't think that's, that should be allowed, no. What do you make of that, sir? Ah, it's totally de crazy, degrading mm -hmm. towards females because he's not a female. It, regardless of what he, what he says he is, uh, biologically, he's still a male. Yeah, and I don't think that a male should be, you know, strip searching any type of females at all. You know what I mean? It's not necessarily a sexual preference. A sexual preference is a sexual preference, right? But, <laughs> yeah. come on now. <laughs> it's got to stop somewhere. Hi, officer. Would you like to weigh in on our question of the day? I'm sorry. No, that would be for the communications branch. <laughs> okay, okay, but he won't communicate with us. <laughs> yeah. So in the summertime, he plays baseball in Windsor, but not with the female leagues, but with the male leagues, because the female league is, is too minor league for him. So I, I'm confused. Are you a male? Are you a female? I mean, pick a lane. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. Um, like I said, uh, uh, with everything as a whole nowadays, with, uh, you know, going to school and now uh, you have litter boxes in some of these schools. You can identify as a pet 
or whatever, or you're male or you're female, whatever you want to identify as, it doesn't matter. When it comes down to bathroom, change rooms, whatever, there's too many sick people in the world, normal people or gender people or transgender people. But regardless, you're still a male. If I had, like I have a son, I would not want my son to be in a bathroom with a woman that thinks she's a man when my son may never have seen any of those parts. The way society is going, I think it's going backwards, so. Well, we've heard there's a trans cat in Windsor, too. Have you seen him? I haven't seen him or her. I don't know. <laughs> got to be careful how I word that, right? Yeah, God forbid we misgender anyone yeah. right in front of police headquarters. Yeah. We might be led away in handcuffs. Yeah, yeah I, might, I might get locked up like you did sometimes. <laughs> anyway, so. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I wouldn't change in the same room as a man because I don't... A, a, a man that thinks he's a female or wants to be a female or however he perceives it, I would not want him to change with me because I'm uncomfor un uncomfortable as it is to undress around women that that makes me twice as uncomfortable to change around a man. And also guys, what we've been tipped off, and we haven't confirmed these allegations yet, but I've been told by a source that he originally applied for the Chatham Police Service. He failed the psych exam. And when he came to Windsor, he either failed it or did not take it. And I think the concern is if someone has some psychological baggage, I think that's the last person you want with lethal force to, to carry a gun. Yes, I agree. I have my gun license and you know what I mean? I'm very, you have to have a certain state of mind because there's so many rules. When, like when you go to a gun place to shoot your gun, there's rules. Chamber has to be up, chamber has to be open. And if you have somebody that has psychological issues and something they ran into that day triggered it and now they're going to shoot a gun or they're, they're carrying it or packing, whatever you want to call it. Now they're thinking of the things that bothered them this morning that they're not thinking of the proper things that have to be done before you place your gun down, before you point your gun, before you do anything with your gun. They're focused on something else other than the safety of that weapon. I believe uh, these people need to be uh, institutionalized for the public safety, and for everybody's safety. Maybe their own safety too. Yes, exactly, exactly. That was an interesting streeter session. Essentially, anyone who is a police officer and anyone who was an officer of the court had absolutely nothing to say. I can't say they, I blame them when you have the brass threatening arrest of people who have a dissenting opinion, uh, I can understand the reluctance to come on camera. Now, those passers-by who weren't with the police or the court, they had something to say and it was all negative. They don't think this should be accommodated, i.e. a biological male passing himself off as a female and invading female safe spaces, strip searching, female suspects uh, and I agree I think it's completely offside we depend on the police to enforce the law and I would imagine that it's not just a legal issue it's all about ethics and morality and what is going on behind these walls right now folks it is immoral and unethical maybe even borderline illegal when it comes to public indecency laws we're going to keep on this story. Hopefully one day we'll get to scrum Mr. Roller himself, see how he justifies uh, this behavior. In the meantime, stay tuned. For Rebel News, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies. <laughs> Folks, are you as sick and tired as we are when it comes to transanity? It's happening from coast to coast, indeed around the world. Well, if so, please go to our website, transmadness.com. That's transmadness.com. Sign the petition, and if you can, kindly make a donation so that we can continue to bring you the other side of the story.